Hello guys, I welcome you all on an academy, India's largest learning platform. Myself, Dr. Nidhi, I am your physiology educator at Unacademy. This is my page on Unacademy, that is unacademy.com slash at the rate KGMC. Follow me out there so that you will get notification of any upcoming classes of mine. This is the code Dr. Nidhi. If anybody wants to join any paid course, you can use this referral code to get additional 10% off. I take in many plus classes, many special classes, so anytime you can join and revise your topic. Now talking about subscription, we have plus subscription where you get access of a both the live and recorded session. By chance, if you miss any session, you can see the recorded version also. You have an opportunity to learn from India's top educator for the medical examination. We always conduct this live test and live quizzes. From that, you can analyze your preparation at any point of time. You have a flexibility. You can study on the device of your choice. You always carry your phone with yourself. So you can access your classes from phone only. If you want to go for the bigger screen, you can go for the your laptops. We have a question bank which consists of 25,000 plus question. These questions are high yield question, clinical based question and this is with explanation. So going, this is going to be very beneficial for all of you. Next is the iconic subscription where you get access of India's two best platform. That is our Unacademy and the Prep Ladder. So you are going to get all the plus benefit like I said, live classes, recorded classes, question bank, live test, live quizzes and the PDF. Along with that, you get access for the prep ladder. In this, you can access the clinical and integrated essential of prep ladder, video lecture from Dream Team, Cushion Bank 3.0, rapid revision and snapshot, and you will also be provided with their treasure and dream notes. So if you are looking for a prep ladder also, go for the iconic subscription everywhere. Next, coming to the special class, our special class is also free of course, but they are way more special from our YouTube session. How they are special? Because our special classes always and always like live interactive sessions is there. Polls feature is there by which you can better understand your topic. Raise a hand feature is there. Now you can talk to your educator in the live session. If you follow any educator, you will get notification of their upcoming classes. After the lecture, you can download the PDF and revise it anytime, anywhere. We have started with this target NEET PG 23 batch. Total duration of this batch is nine months. It consists of two modules, module one and module two. Module one is going to last for six months. Then we have module two, which is going to have a lasting for three months. In module one, what we are going to do? We are going to have subject wise batch. And in module two, we are going to revise all those topics. So if you are looking for NEET PG 2023, do enroll yourself in this one. Next, we are also started the batch for the repeaters. This is an EPG 23 test and discussion batch for the repeater. This is also started and its month, its total month is also nine months. So according to your requirement, you take your subscription and start your preparation right now. This is the fee structure of all the NEAT PG subscription. This is the fee structure for NEAT PG plus subscription. This is the fee structure for the iconic subscription. This is the fee structure for the Unacademy Lite subscription. This is the fee structure for MBBS First Prof subscription. And this is the fee structure for the UPSC CMS subscription. So as per your requirement, you take your subscription and start your preparation right now. So moving to our topic, today we are going to study about muscular physiology. In this, we are going to study about skeletal muscle. First, coming to the introduction. In this first, we are going to discuss about structure and function of skeletal muscle. The structural component consists of a cell membrane of skeletal muscle, which is known as sarcolemma, and the connective tissue layer is there. This connective tissue layer is further subdivided into three layers, epimycium, perimycium, and the endomycium. Epimycium is the outermost covering. If we talk about whole muscle unit, ki baat karte hai, that is covered by this epimycium. Okay? Our fascicle, ki baat karte hai, our fascicle are covered by the perimycium. And single myofibril, single individual muscle fiber or single myofibril is covered by endomycium. So we have endomycium, perimycium and the outermost covering is the epimycium. Okay? 
this is the summary muscle fiber group to form fascicle and fascicle group to form muscle so our muscle fiber is covered by endomysium okay or fir hamara fascicle aa jayega fir hamara muscle aa jayega muscle is covered by perimysium the most important unit of our muscle is sarcomere the functional unit of muscle is our sarcomere now coming to the point what is sarcomere sarcomere are the structural component that is all the structural component that comes between two z line is our sarcomere so suppose this is our z line in between two z line we have this thin filament that is actin filament we have this thick filament which is myosin filament then again we have thin filament then again we have thick filament that is myosin filament thin filament so all the structural component that is coming between two z line is the sarcomere a sarcomere consists of three band a band i band and h band now it consists of two line also z line and m line so see this is the diagram this is our z line one second okay this is our z line and in the middle we have m line this is our m line okay now coming to the bands all the bands this is our a band which consists of thick filament this is our a band next is the i band this is the i band which consists of only and only thin filament so this is our i band and the last one that is our h band h band is the portion of a band which is not overlapped by actin filament so this is our h band or h zone the portion of a band which is not overlapped by actin is known as h band so see coming to the detail of h band a band as we already discussed it consists of a dark band which is made up of myosin filament which is the thick filament and this a band is present in the center of our sarcomere as you can see in this diagram this is our a band next is the this diagram same this is our i band which consists of only and only thin filament okay so next is the i band which consists of which is our light band and it is made up of our actin filament which is our thin filament the last band that is h band it is the portion of a band which is not overlapped by actin as we already discussed this one next the two lines are there z line and m line our z line denote middle part of myosin or middle part of our sarcomere and z line ki agar baat kare to z line um, se hamara actin filament anchor hota hai so these are all about the all bands and line in our sarcomere so see this is the detailed diagram this is our a band which consists of thick filament myosin filament it is dark band this is our i band which consists of thin filament only this is our h band it is a portion of a band which is not overlapped by actin filament this is our m line in m line we have m line protein like myomycin m protein or obscurnate ठीक है, next is this Z line, this blue one is our Z line, and the next important one is our alpha actinid. This is alpha actinid. It is the protein which is going to anchor our thin filament to the Z line is our alpha actinid. Okay, next supporting protein is our titin. It is a spring-like protein that arises from Z line. and it reaches to m line so we can say this titan is anchoring our z line to m line is this clear everybody is this clear so moving further same thing is written out here anchoring proteins are titan act alpha actinin and myomycin am i titan kya titan is a spring like protein that arises from z line and it reaches to m line alpha actinin alpha actinin connect our i band to z line or we connect our actin filament to z line next is myomycin myomycin kya karta hai myosin band ko m line se connect karta hai 
Now coming to the next important point, what happened during contraction? During muscular contraction, kya hoga? So see, this is the relaxed muscle. In relaxed muscle, this is our H band. Okay, this is our I band. And in this contracted state, we are seeing this H band shorten up and this I band shorten up. Okay, well, this A band, this is our A band. This A band remains same. So, we can say during contraction, H band and I band shorten up so while A band remain unchanged. Is this clear? So, this point is very, very important. Do remember everybody. So, moving further. Now, this, all the cytoskeletal protein in myofibril we will discuss. The contractile protein, the most important one, is our actin and myosin. These all are, these two are microfilament. We all know we have microtubule, we have intermediate filament, and we have microfilament. Microfilament is the smallest, is having the smallest diameter out of all the cytoskeletal protein. In this, we have actin and myosin filament. These two are the contractile protein of our muscle and the regulating protein are troponin, tropomyosin. First coming to this tropomyosin. What is the role of this tropomyosin? During the resting condition, this tropomyosin usually cover the myosin binding site. Okay, this myosin binding site is present in our actin filament and this is usually covered by this tropomyosin. So, what happened? Due to covering of the site, there is no actin and myosin interaction. But during contraction, what happened? Calcium is required for contraction. We all know calcium goes and binds to the troponin tropomyosin complex. Actually, it binds with this troponin only. Troponin has our calcium binding site. Troponin consists of the calcium binding site. So, calcium is going to bind with the troponin C and the troponin tropomyosin complex will eventually move away from myosin binding site. So, what happened? Myosin binding site get exposed and that lead to the actin myosin interaction and that lead to the muscular contraction. Okay. So, what is the role of tropomyosin? Tropomyosin in the resting condition cover the myosin binding site that is present in our actin filament. So, see, this is our diagram. This is the resting condition. And this is our actin filament. This is our myosin filament. In actin filament, we have this myosin binding site. Okay. So, this myosin binding site is usually covered with this tropomyosin troponin complex. This is the tropomyosin troponin complex. But actual video dekhrem diagram mein, this troponin is covering our myosin binding site, not the troponin. Okay. And during contraction, kya hoga? calcium will come and it is going to bind with the troponin C. And the whole complex, this troponin tropomyosin complex will move away from myosin binding site. So, we are seeing this myosin binding site get exposed and that lead to the actin myosin interaction and that lead to the muscular contraction. Is this clear? Everybody, what is the role of tropomyosin? So, tropomyosin in the resting condition covers this myosin binding site. So, moving further, next regulating protein is our troponin. This troponin consists of three components, troponin I, troponin T, troponin C. We can see in this diagram, this is troponin I, this is a troponin T, and this is troponin C. The, in troponin C, we are seeing this four site. So, this troponin C consists of a 4 calcium binding site. Okay. First coming to the troponin T. This is the component of troponin where our tropomyosin interact with it. Okay. Troponin I, what does it do? It inhibits the actin-myosin interaction. And troponin C, we already discussed, it consists of a 4 calcium binding site. So, do remember, troponin consists of three parts, troponin I, troponin T, troponin C. 
So moving further, next is the supporting proteins in our myofibril. And first one is the titine. It is a muscular spring or you can say spring-like protein that arises from Z line and reaches to M line. Next is the desmine. This act like a tumor marker for the sarcomas. Next is the dystrophin. Dystrophin mutation lead to the muscular dystrophy. So these all are the important supporting protein in our myofibrils. And the last one, the most important one is the relaxation protein. The relaxation protein in our myofibril is sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase pump, which is also known as sarca pump. Okay, sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase pump, sarca pump is the relaxation pump. Okay, so what does it do? It pushes back the calcium. It is going to push back the calcium into sarcoplasmic reticulum. So what happened? Our extracellular calcium will decrease. Our troponin tropomyosin complex again move to the myosin binding site. So myosin binding site get, get covered and actin myosin interaction will stop and that lead to the muscular relaxation. So this point is very important. Do remember for relaxation the sarcopum is required. So see, the important point out here is how this extract, excitation, contraction, couplings occur. We all know resting membrane potential of our alpha motor neuron, my neuron ka membrane potential, resting membrane potential kitna hota hai? Minus 70 millivolt. And when it is excited, when this alpha motor neuron is excited, what happened? Depolarization is that. And this depolarization is due to influx of a sodium via voltage gated sodium channel. Since positive ion is moving inside the cell, RMP is going to fall. From minus 70, it is going to reach to minus 40 millivolt. And at minus 40 millivolt, what happened? Voltage gated to calcium channel open up. And that lead to the calcium influx inside our neuron. So my calcium, kya karega? it is going to bind with the neurotransmitter vesicle inside. And it is going to cause exocytosis of that neurotransmitter. So which neurotransmitter will be released? Our acetylcholine will be released at neuromuscular junction. And this acetylcholine is going to bind with this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor which is present in our muscular end okay this is our neuromuscular junction okay this is our nerve plate and this is our muscular end so at nmj mara kya hoga? acetylcholine will be released that go and bind with the acetylcholine receptor which is present in our mem in our skeletal muscle okay or jaise hi bind hoga, sodium influx inside the muscle is going to occur and this lead to the rise of our end plate potential or the local potential. Do remember this. This is very important. Due to influx of the sodium ion, our muscular end potential developed, that is known as end plate potential or the local potential. And this potential from the sarcolemma, it is going to reach to the TETB. Is this clear? Abhi da kisi ko koi doubt? Thik hai, samaj mein aarai na? So, this end plate potential or local potential is going to come from sarcolema to the T tubule. And in T tubule, we have the dihydropyridine receptor. See? So, it is going to cause conformational change in our dihydropyridine receptor. And when conformational change occurs in this one, rhinotene receptor which is present in our sarcoplasmic reticulum open up. And due to opening of this rhinotene receptor, kya hoga? Calcium from the terminal cistern release hona shuru hoga. l ka terminal cistern se amas calcium release hoga. This calcium go and bind with this troponin C. And troponin tropomyosin complex will move away from myosin binding site. So that is going to expose our myosin binding site. To, and that lead to the interaction of our actin and myosin. Cross bridge formation hoga. That lead to the power stroke and uske baad kya hoga? finally the calcium is pushed back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum via the sarcopum and that lead to the muscular relaxation. Okay, is this clear? How the muscular contraction occur, how the muscular relaxation occur, how the excitation contraction coupling occur, everybody is this clear?
is this clear with everyone we will see this one from the diagram also do you remember what happened our resting membrane potential of neuron is minus 70 millivolt and when it is excited when our neuron is excited alpha motor neuron is excited our sodium influx is stuck and that lead to the decrease in membrane and potential from minus 70 to minus 40 at minus 40 what happened voltage gated calcium channel open up calcium influx is there and that lead to the exocytosis of acetylcholine this acetylcholine go and bind with the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that is present in our muscular end and due to which what happens sodium influx start and that lead to the development of local potential or endoplate potential this local potential from sarcolemma reaches the ttb in ttb we have this dihydropyridine receptor so the conformational changes occur in this dihydropyridine receptor that lead to the opening of a rhinodine receptor this rhinodine receptor is present in our sarcoplasmic reticulum terminal cistern of l tubule is going to have this rhinodine receptor so due to opening of this rhinodine receptor what happened calcium efflux will start this calcium go and bind with the troponin c troponin tropomyosin complex will move away from myosin binding site so the myosin binding site get exposed and due to exposure kya hoga mara actin myosin interaction hoga power stroke hoga coupling hogi okay cross bridge formation hoga power stroke hoga hamara sliding hoga and that leads to muscular contraction and for relaxation circa pump pushes back the calcium into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and that leads to the muscular relaxation is this clear so see this is the diagram also this is our ttb this is our sarcoplasmic reticulum or you can say terminal cistern of l tb So, what happened from the sarcolemma, the end plate potential reaches to the TT. So, that causes conformational change in our dihydropyridine receptor. So, what happened Con due to conformational changes out here, the rhinodine receptor open up that lead to the calcium efflux. This calcium is going to bind with this troponin C. Troponin C tropomyosin complex move away side from myosin binding site that lead to the muscular contraction. For relaxation, our sarca pump pushes back the calcium in push back the calcium into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So the calcium is going to decrease and that lead to the muscular relaxation. This is clear. So moving further, now coming to the detail of our sliding filament theory. It consists of various steps. First step make out that ATP binding is there. Normally, the myosin head is at the 45 degree. When ATP binds to it, its head, Next step is start ho jata hai. ATP is activity is start ho jati and that lead to the ATP hydrolysis. Take it. Next step is start ho jayega. Resting stage of muscle mein hamara ATP hydrolysis ho jayegi. And jaysi ATP hydrolyze hoga, ADP and phosphate will be formed. Our ye jo myosin head hai, from 45 degree it turns to the 90 degree. Is this clear? So first step mein kya hoga? ATP binding hogi. Jaisi binding hogi, ATP is activity start ho jayega and that lead to the second stage that is ATP hydrolysis. That lead to the formation of ADP and the phosphate and due to that what happened? Our myosin head from 45 degree turns to the 90 degree. And in presence of calcium kya hoga? Humara ye myosin binding site expose hoga. That lead to the next thing that is cross bridge formation. So in presence of calcium the actin myosin interaction start in this phase. And next step make yoga to phosphate form water by the hydrolysis of ATP. This is released from the myosin. And Jesse release hoga myosin head may pass stroke aga. Power stroke yoga. Kyuki myosin head 90 pa gera. And it again turned to the 45 degree. And we all know this interaction is there. Actin myosin interaction is there. So our myosin head from 90 it is going to turn to the 45 degree. So it is going to pull this actin filament. So, when myosin head turns from 90 to again 45 degree, it is going to pull this actin filament, which lead to the sliding of filament. Okay. And in next step, what happened? ADP will be released. Take a hydrolysis. What form was that? ATP hydrolyzed. So, ADP 
and the phosphate was formed. Phosphate was released in fourth step and ADP is released in fifth step. Or, जैसे ADP free myosin head होगा, that always and always remain stuck to the actin filament until it receive a new amount of new molecule of ATP. Is this clear? So हमारा इसीलिए होता है rigor mortis. We all know after the death the stiffening of muscle is there. Why the rigor mortis is there? Because after the death, due to lack of ATP, the myosin head remain and stuck to the actin filament. That lead to the rigor mortis. Okay, is this clear? See, this is the diagram. This is the first step. So, how many ATP bind with the myosin head? Okay, initially the myosin head is at forty-five degree, and in next step, what happened? ATP hydrolysis happen. Due to ATP hydrolysis. Myosin head from 45 degree turns to 90 degree, and in presence of calcium, initially the weakly bond state is there, and later on the strongly bond state is there. फिर next step में क्या होगा? Phosphate release होगा. Due to release of this phosphate, हमारा myosin head from 90 again turns to 45 degree, and that lead to the pulling of this actin filament. Okay, and that lead to the sliding. ठीक है नेक्स्ट स्टेप में एडीपी विल बी रिलीज एंड एडीपी फ्री मायोसिन हेड ऑलवेज ऑलवेज रिमेन स्टार्ट टू द एक्टिन फिलामेंट अंटिल इट रिसीव अ न्यू मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ दिस एटीपी सो दिस इज अबाउट द स्लाइडिंग फिलामेंट थ्योरी सो सेम थिंग इज रिटर्न आउट हियर व्हाट इज डू यू मीन बाय दिस रिगर मोटिस आफ्टर द डेथ द स्टिपिंग ऑफ मसल इज देयर दैट इज ड्यू टू लैक ऑफ एटीपी मायोसिन हेड रिमेन स्टार्ट टू द एक्टिन फिलामेंट and that lead to the stiffening or that lead to the rigor mortis now next topic we are going to discuss is skeletal muscle contraction and this the most important one is the length and tension relationship for this do remember this point this is very very important for maximum tension to develop in the filament is two criteria are required first actin and myosin overlap should be optimal and there should be room to slide theek okay? hai there should be space to slide now let me draw a curve for all of you on x axis we are taking the length of muscle length of sarcomere on y axis we take this tension okay next drawing the curve for all of you This is point A. This is point B. This is point C, and this is point D. At point A, the sarcomere length is one point six five micrometer. In this situation, what happened? Actin and myosin overlap is optimal, but the, in this situation, when the sarcomere length is only and only one point six five micrometer, they lack the room to slide. so due to that tension out here is less now coming to the next point that is point b and c at this position the sarcomere length is 2 micrometer in this position actin myosin interaction is optimal plus then there is room to slide there is proper room to slide so that's why at the point b and c the tension developed out here is a maximum and while at a point b hum dekhenge sarcomere ka length bahut zyada increase ho gaya hai and due to that actin myosin overlap is not optimal so the tension developed out there is least see this is the curve this is point a at the point a sarcomere length is 1.65 micrometer out here the overlap is optimal but they lack room to slide so tension develop is less At the point B and C, what we are seeing, sarcomere length is two micrometer. They have optimal overlap. They have room to slide, so the tension developed out there is a maximum. While at this point D, we are seeing the sarcomere length is very very high, and due to that, there is no optimal overlap of this actin myosin filament. So that's why the tension developed out here is the least. Is this clear? 
So now coming to our two terminology, optimal length and equilibrium length. What do you mean by this optimal length or equilibrium length? Optimal length is the length of muscle at which tension is maximum. That is known as optimal length. ठीक है, this two micrometer of sarcomere पे हमने देखा था maximum tension होता है, so this two micrometer of sarcomere length is the optimal length of our muscle or the resting length of our muscle. Next is the equilibrium length. When our muscle is detached from its bony attachment, the relaxed muscle length is known as equilibrium length. Is this clear? What do you mean by this optimal length and equilibrium length? Everybody? So moving further, two type of tension develops in our muscle. First is known as active tension that is developed due to actinomyosin interaction. Next is this passive tension. Do remember this passive tension is due to the stretching of elastic protein like our titan will be stretched. That lead to this passive tension. Okay. And we can calculate the total tension by this formula. Total tension will be summation of active tension plus passive tension. Is this clear? Everybody, till now, is this clear? Everybody, is this clear? What do you mean by this active tension? How the active tension is maximum? Active tension is always maximum when the sarcomere length is 2 micrometer. At that point, what happened? The interaction is optimal plus there is proper room to stretch. So that's why active tension is a maximum when the sarcomere length is 2 micrometer. Okay. So this 2 micrometer is also known as resting length. Okay. Next, moving further. Now, from where the energy comes for the muscular contraction for the initial three seconds energy come from the atp storage site okay after that three seconds from la next eight to ten seconds energy come from creatinine phosphate after that energy come from glycolysis then energy come from aerobic metabolism okay so do remember this one this is also important for three, three second initial three second the atp come from immediate storage site and for next eight to ten second the energy come from creatinine phosphate okay then moving further to the main, next most important point out here is different type of muscular fibers are now coming to the types of muscular fiber so we have two type of muscular fiber first is a type one next is a type two this type 2 is further divided into 2A and 2B. First, what is the difference between 1 and 2? Type 1 fiber are small fiber. While type 2 fiber are large fiber. Okay. So this type 1 fiber is also red in color because of presence of myoglobin. But this type 2 is further divided into 2 1, 2A and 2B. 2A is red in color while 2B is white in color. So in 2B, the myoglobin is absent. So that's why it is white in color. Since this type 1 is small fiber, so that's why it is a slow fiber. Okay. This is large fiber, so it is fast fiber. So conduction will be faster in this one. So, type 1 fiber is also known as slow fiber. Type 2 is also known as fast fiber. Now, it is red in color. So, myoglobin is present. So, our metabolism will be done via oxidative pathway. Okay. And this type 2A is going to have metabolism initially by oxidative pathway. And when say oxygen finish, hoga, then glycolytic pathway will start. And this type 2B is only having the glycolytic enzyme because of lack of oxygen. Okay, so type 1 fiber is known as slow oxidative fiber. Type 2 is known as fast oxidative glycolytic fiber. Type 2B is known as fast glycolytic fiber. 
Is this clear, everyone? So now coming to this important chart, this is very, very important. See what happened. Type 1 fiber. Type 1 fiber, it is a red fiber. So presence of myoglobin is there. So oxygen storage is there. So ATP formation is hoga? Aerobic pathway se hoga. Okay? Since this is a classification, classification mein hamar type 1 fiber small fiber hai, so type 2 fiber larger fiber hai. Theak hai? This mein hamar type 2 A jo hai, wo bhi red color hai, myoglobin will be there, oxygen storage will be there, so ATP form kaise hoga? Aerobic pathway se. While aap agar hum baat karenge type 2 B fiber ka, to they are white in color. Since they are white in color, myoglobin is not there, so the oxygen storage is not there. So, our ATP is formed in anaerobic pathways. And as the anaerobic pathways start, what will our intermediate product be? Lactic acid. So, that's why what happened due to accumulation of this lactic acid in type 2B fiber, they are fatigue prone. Is this clear? Everybody? While this type 1 and type 2 may aerobic pathway, so lactic is a form hoga, so they will be the fatigue resistant. Now the titch duration. This is a small fiber, so it is going to take a larger time for contraction and relaxation. They are slow fiber, so they are going to have a larger twitch duration. Okay, when we type 2, ka baat karenge, to large fiber, hote, so they are fast fiber, so twitch duration will be smaller out here. Now, titanizing frequency, ki baat karenge, to what is the formula? Titanizing frequency is equal to 1 upon contraction period. Take it. Twitch durations are that, the contraction period will be more. Relaxation period will be more. Both will be more. So, contraction period more hoga, to titanizing frequency yoga less hoga. So, titanizing frequency of type 1 fiber is less. While type 2, 5A and 2B are having higher titanizing frequency. Now coming to the function part. Type 1 is responsible for long and slow contraction. While this type 2A and type 2B are involved in fine and skilled movement. So all the point in this chart is very, very important. Do remember. Is this clear with everybody? So, type 1 fiber is slow oxidative pathway fiber. Type 2 is a slow oxidative, fast oxidative glycolytic path fiber. And type 2B is a fast glycolytic fiber. Okay. Is this clear, everybody? So, type 2B is a fatigue prone fiber. While type 1 and type 2A is a fatigue resistant fiber. So, moving further, see. Now coming to the recruitment of motor unit. So this is the order of recruitment of motor unit. The first one which is recruited is type 1, then type 2A, then type 2B is recruited during muscular contraction. Type 1 is slow motor unit, type 2 is a fast fatigue resistant motor unit. Type 2B is a fast fatigable motor unit. So do remember this order of recruitment. The first one which is recruited is type 1, which is a slow oxidative fiber. Then we have type 2, then we have a type 2P. Is this clear? So moving further, now coming to the phenomena of tetanus. When we give a single stimulus, there is single contraction, there is single relaxation. This phenomena of single contraction and single relaxation with one stimulus is known as some single muscular twitch. Okay, now frequency increase. Karte. We are giving multiple in stimulus. So initially we will see this in incomplete tetanus. In incomplete tetanus, what do we see? We are going to see this series of contraction is there and series of relaxation is there. This is our single muscle twitch which consists of single contraction, single relaxation. Okay, next is the complete tetanus. When the frequency of stimulus hai, that reaches to the tetanizing frequency, there will be sustained contraction and there will be no relaxation. This is known as complete tetanus. 
okay see this is the diagram this is sing with single stimulus there is one contraction and one relaxation which is a known as single muscle twitch and when we increase the frequency we will get this in the completedness in which we get this series of contraction series of uh, relaxation next is when we increase the frequency and it reaches to the tetanizing frequency this point is important when it reaches to the tetanizing frequency we get this sustained contraction and no relaxation is seen this is known as completedness is this clear so next important point is the height of contraction in the tetanized muscle this is the tetanized muscle so this height of contraction of tetanized muscle is four time of contraction or height of contraction of single muscular twitch so this is single muscular twitch simple muscle twitch ka four times height of contraction right so this point is important do remember next ye formula bhi hum discuss kar chuke hain tetanizing frequency is equal to 1 upon contraction period so this formula is also important okay then everybody is this clear next we are going to see some question part is this clear with everybody ओके देन फिर मूव करते हैं हम अपने क्वेश्चन पार्ट पे फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ टुडे सेशन एंड मास्कुलर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑल आर ट्रू एक्सेप्ट ए बैंड रिमेन ऑन चेन एच बैंड डिसअपियर आई बैंड बिकम वाइडर टू जेड लाइन कम क्लोज इट मास्कुलर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑल आर ट्रू एक्सेप्ट in muscular contraction a band remain unchanged this is true h band shorten or disappear i band become short enough not wide enough two z line come closer this is true so answer is only and only c coming to the next one the site where myosin head bind to the actin and the skeletal muscle is covered by option a tropomyosin option b troponin option c calcium option d none of them the site where myosin head bind to actin and a skeletal muscle is covered by everybody answer this question fast yeah why true tropomyosin is going to cover the myosin binding site coming to the next one or tropomyosin help in fusion of actin and myosin cover myosin and prevent attachment of actin and myosin slide over myosin causes a calcium release which of the following statement is true regarding tropomyosin help in fusion of actin and myosin cover myosin and prevent attachment of actin and myosin slide over myosin causes calcium release
tropomycin is going to cover the myosin binding site and prevent attachment of actin and myosin major. Coming to the next one, which of the following trigger muscular contraction? Calcium binding with this tropomyosin, calcium binding with this troponin C, ATP breakdown, calcium binding with this troponin I. Which of the following trigger muscular contraction? Everybody answer this question fast. Which of the following trigger muscular contraction? Everybody answer this question fast. Yeah, calcium binding to the troponin C and the ATP breakdown both are required for the muscular contraction. Coming to the next one. Twitch of a single motor unit is called as a myoclonic jerk, fasciculation, tremor or chorea. Twitch of a single motor unit. Everybody answer this question fast. <coughs> Twitch of a single motor unit is known as fasciculation. There is two terms, fasciculation and fibrillation. When we are talking about motor unit, the term fasciculation is used. When we are talking about a single myofibril, only one myofibril, the term fibrillation is used. Okay. This fibrillation can't be seen through the skin, while this fasciculation is visible through the skin. So, this is the summary. Do remember. Now, next question is important. The force of muscular contraction can be increased by all of the following except. Increasing the frequency of activation of motor unit, increasing the number of motor unit activated, increasing the amplitude of action potential in motor unit, recruiting large motor unit. The force of muscular contraction can be increased by all of the following except. See, frequency increase karenge, to summation hoga, hamara force of contraction is going to increase. Number of motor unit increase karenge, force of contraction is going to increase. Larger motor unit, yani type 2 fibers agar use karete, to force of contraction increase kar jayega. Agar amplitude of action potential ko increase karenge, force of contraction is not going to increase. Okay, so answer is C. Coming to the next one. Features of slow mus switching muscle are contain large amount of myoglobin composed of smaller fiber fibers contain large amount of glycolytic enzyme white in color it has high ATPs active since it consists of multiple answers do check every point very carefully what do you mean by slow twitching muscle anybody what do you mean by the slow twitching muscle this is our which fiber? They are our type 1 fiber. Now answer this question. Which of all are the feature of type 1 fibers? They are small fiber. They are red fiber because of presence of large amount of myoglobin. They have high ATPs active. So answer is A, B, and A. Is this clear? 
coming to the next one which of the following is it not a sarcolemma protein sarcoglycan dystrophin dystroglycan or the polycan Which of the following is the not a sarcolemma protein? Yeah, way true. Polycan is not a sarcolemma protein. The rest are the sarcolemma protein. Coming to the next, this is a nice question. There is a mutation of a gene coding for this rhinodine receptor, and that leads to the malignant hypothermia. Now, which of the following statement best explain the increase in head production, or you can say malignant hypothermia in this situation? Which of the statement is true? Option A, increase meta, muscle metabolism by excess of calcium, thermic effect of blood, increase sympathetic discharge or mitochondria thermogenesis. And there is a mutation of gene coding for the serinodine receptor and that leads to the malignant hypothermia. Which of the following statement explain this malignant hypothermia in this situation? Everybody answer this question fast. Malignant hypothermia QA. Rhinodine receptor may mutation hai. that is going to cause a more calcium efflux from the sarcoplasmic protein. And due to that, what happened? More muscular contraction is there, and that is going to cause increased heat. So we can say increased muscle metabolism by excess of calcium is the responsible for the malignant hypothermia in this situation. Okay, so answer is A. Coming to the next one. A protein marked A, this is the protein marked A, this in the Z disk, Z disk pe kaun sa ye protein hai A, Thik hai? titine, nebuline, myosin or alpha actin. So this is our Z line. This is our protein A. So the protein marked A in the Z disk is titine, nebuline, myosin, alpha actin. This is our alpha actin. Sorry. This is our alpha actin because this is our Z line. This is our actin filament. Actin filament is anchored by the Z line via this alpha actin. So answer is the T. Coming to the next one. A graph below is showing a simple muscle twitch of a gas of a frog gastrocinamic muscle. We have to calculate the tetanizing frequency. So everybody answer this question. Anybody, what is the formula of calculating tetanizing frequency? Anyone? What is the formula? Formula is the tetanizing frequency is equal to 1 upon the contraction period. And this graph is for single muscular twitch. So this is the contraction period. That is a 40 millisecond. 
So 1 upon a 40 millisecond is going to give the answer. That is our 24. So answer is A. Clear everybody. Coming to the next one. Detachment of myosin head from actin is caused by change in troponin C configuration, attachment of ATP to the head, binding of ATP and phosphate to the head, pumping of calcium into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Detachment of a myosin head from actin is caused by. This is also a nice question. Everybody answer this question fast. Yeah, the most important point for the relax for the detachment of myosin head is binding of the ATP. Sorry, binding of not ADP, it is ATP, attachment of ATP to the head. Sorry. Okay, this attachment of ATP is required for the detachment of myosin head from the actin filament. Do remember the rigor mortis is due to lack of ATP, myosin head remain stuck. So, for the detachment, relax, our ATP binding is required for the detachment of myosin head. Coming to the next one. What all are related to the negative lachiotrophy except? Anybody, what do you mean by this lachiotrophy? Lachiotrophy stands for relaxation. So, negative relaxation or you can say delayed relaxation is seen in all situation except. Okay, delayed relaxation is seen in all situations except excess calcium within the cell, defective calcium removal via the sodium calcium exchanger, improper functioning of the sarcopam or excess catecholamine. All are related to negative lachiotrophy except. Negative relaxation is seen in delayed relaxation. Kab ka milega? Excess calcium within the cell, defective calcium removal via calcium exchanger, sodium calcium exchanger, improper functioning of sarcopam, all going to cause delay in relaxation. Exception is this excess catecholamine. Okay, excess catecholamine is going to promote the relaxation by inhibiting our phospholamine. For this catecholamine, inhibit our phospholamine. So, what does phospholamine do? It inhibits sarcopum. So, out here, the sarcopum will not be inhibited. Sarcopum activity is going to increase. So, it is going to cause increased rate of relaxation. So, answer is a D. Is this clear? So, that was a nice question. Do you remember? Okay. Moving to the next one. This is the summary of some terminology. Chronotrophy stand for artrite. Inotrophy stand for contraction. Tromotrophy stand for conduction velocity. Bathmotrophy stand for excitability. Lachiotrophy stand for relaxation. Autorhythmicity in heart initiates its own impulse at a rhythmic interval is known as autorhythmicity. Okay, now coming to the next question. All are true about excitation, contraction, coupling, except acetylcholine is released at nerve terminum, terminal. Calcium is pumped back into sarcoplasmic reticulum during relaxation. Calcium is released from sarcoplasmic reticulum during contraction. Calcium binds with the tropomyosin to initiate the muscular contraction. Everybody answer this question fast.
all are true except See, acetylcholine is released very true. Calcium is pumped back into sarcoplasmic reticulum for relaxation. For contraction, it is released from sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium bind with this troponin C, not tropomyosin. Okay, so answer is ready. Is this clear? Coming to the next one, the last question of today's session. The most common type of calcium channel in the skeletal muscle is T type, L type, R type or in type the most common type of calcium channel in a skeletal muscle is and to answer this question fast everybody Most common type of calcium channel in a skeletal muscle is our L type calcium channel. Do remember this one. Is this clear with everyone? So this is important. Do remember this point. The most common type of calcium channel in a skeletal muscle is our L type. Okay. Is this clear? Everybody is this clear? All the concept related to the skeletal muscle. Okay then. Hope you all like the session. If you like the session, do like and share. This is important. Jitna zada share karte hoti, zada class interactive hoti hai. So do share and subscribe our channel. That is Unacademy Live Neat PG. And press the bell icon. Don't forget to press this bell icon so that you will get notification of any upcoming classes on this page. In this page. Okay, thank you so much for joining. Regular Manit Kateri, you will definitely be able to achieve your target. You will definitely crack your exam with good rank. This is the code Dr. Nidhi. If anybody wants to join any paid course, you can use this to get additional 10% off. So that's all for today's session. Thank you so much for joining. See you all in the next session. Bye-bye, everyone.